voting could be a powerful thing if we get to choose who we vote for. See this sister here, see this sister here, see this sister here. If I go to them and I say I want you to run for Congress, no, man, I ain't, no, 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 it's all set up, it's fixed, don't worry. One of you three will win because only you three are going to be in it. So one of you three got a 33 and a third percent chance of winning. But the thing is, you all have to follow the same agenda. That invalidates it. When you have a native tribe or the First Nation and we sit down, we do things by consensus. Of course, if you've got 300 million people in your country, it's hard to do shit by consensus. You can't even agree to, you know, the date because the Jews have one calendar, the Christians have another, you know. You can't even decide on what year it is. How are you going to, you know, it's difficult. Hip-hop was the voice of the voiceless. Hip-hop has become the voice of corporations. Even the little graffiti artists get paid to do certain aerosols and, okay. And the DJs are wearing certain sneakers that they were given by the record company, you know, by the, by the different corporations. What I'm trying to teach you, what I'm trying to share with you, is for you to analyze and to think harder on what freedom is and justice is, and who knows who got the first gold record in hip hop? Come on. Yes. Was it Sugar Hill? Curtis Blow, very good. Anybody know the story of Sugar Hill? Anybody? Sugar Hill, the place? Sugar Hill Gang. Da, 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 da. Sugar, Sugar Hill in Harlem. No, Sugar Hill in Harlem is where they got the name. Because the sister Robinson who put that thing together. Well, anybody know how to do the beat for Sugar Hill? I'm louder, louder, louder. That's it, right? <laughs> Big Bang Hank or whatever. That's a race of all that stuff was co-opted from Kaz. Grandmaster Kaz, who was the, um, one of the MCs in the Cold Crush. Why do I ask that question? Because all the way back then, they were ripping people off. What nation you guys with? Jibway. Uh, you know uh, Nile, the graffiti artist? Oh, there he is. He's part of your... <laughs> Keep going. I, I, how the hell do I get all his nods and... You know, <laughs> man, I'm sorry. Keep going. I was trying to show you early hip-hop. Look. Stop right there. Back up. Back up. Okay. We went from fight the power that. Now, Fight the Power was essentially about gaining control over your community, gaining control over your economic base, and I don't care who you are, I don't care how radical, how extreme, how, how Christian, how Jewish, how, how Muslim, however, unless you have a link to economic power, your people are going to suffer. So when Public Enemy talked of Fight the Power, they were talking about fighting the institutions that were corrupt within their communities, the school boards. It all starts with the school boards. You misundereducate Lauren Hill, or you undereducate, or you tell them a bunch of stuff that ain't true about science, math. Anybody ever see a map of the earth and you see Africa looks like this? Look at the size of Africa and look at Look at even to the maps. Anybody aware of what I'm talking about? Anybody? Africa could fit between the United States and Africa, literally on the map. But they don't want you to know that, just like uh, the Israelis don't want you to know that Israel is in Africa. They call it what? What do they call where they are? Middle East. Middle East. Well, if that's the Middle East, then where's the East? And where's the Far East? I'm confused. I'm not real and <laughs> smart. I never really understood. But I look at a map, and I see Iraq, Iran, all this shit. Then I see Israel, 
which looks like a little slice of pizza over there in between these huge land masses, and they're trying to tell you that that's not Africa, and therefore they're not Africans. So what I'm talking about is your miseducation that starts with geography, mathematics, science, languages, and most important of all, history. History, when you break it up, is two words, and I'll show you what those two words are. Now, I'm not a big fan of Osama bin Laden. I'm not a big fan of anybody that takes a bomb and blows it up on a, a, a school bus full of children. I'm not a big fan of anybody that attacks children and women and non-combatants. And I'm not a big fan of violence either. But if you look at our native people and how we were promoted in the media as savages, that they had the right to come in and take our land and kill our children and rape our women and take away our religion up to the modern day where they, they had the boarding schools and they didn't want us to know our history. And if you spoke your language, I'd beat your ass. And that's not ancient history. That's within the last two or three decades. His story. And if you look at how they're, they're, they're putting, how many of you are Muslim in this class? We, this, is an honest, this is an honest thing. One Muslim. Anybody else Muslim? Islamic. They're making you guys look like the devil incarnate. You're savages. You're animals. You're, you know. Why? So we could go in and take their land, rape their women, kill their children. And if you don't believe me, look at Palestine. That's the most censored story on the planet Earth. What I'm trying to show you is that it's recycled. And the same way they castigated native people as being less than human, when the Africans came here in chains, they labeled them as less than human and it justified them being in chains. And it justified them being slaves. And it justified their women being killed, their women being raped and their babies being killed. And if I'm saying anything wrong, if I'm lying, if I'm misinterpreting anything, please step to me. It's history. And they wrote the history. And just now, we can't go back to Sitting Bull and Chief Joseph and, and Geronimo. But we're here now, and it's the same stuff in the media. The attacks on Islam are the same that were on Native Americans. And you tend to say, oh, look at them. They, you look at them. They're blowing up this and they're blowing up that. But there's always a hand there. And that same hand that's got the puppet strings said, well, we give him a black president. That'll make him happy. And nobody's going to look at the history of that black president because he's black. He got a charming wife, some beautiful daughters. So nobody's going to look and say, wait a minute, what has he done? How did he get in that position? Is he the new Nat Turner? Is he going to give us freedom, justice, and equality because he got a little bit of suntan? And he's eloquent as shit because that last guy up there was as dumb as shit. <laughs> I went to one college in, I don't know, somewhere in the United States. When you do a lot of tours, your brain gets. And I said, how many of you have role models? And very few people raised their hand. And I said, how about George Bush? And they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, George Bush should be your role model. And they looked at me. They knew that, you know, they had Forrest Gump standing in front of them. And the one, one little girl in the back said, why should George Bush be my role? I said, because he was a C student, he was a cokehead, he was a slacker and a fuck up, and he became president of the United States. That means there's hope for any of you. <laughs> back up, that's the ugliest picture, back up. That's the ugliest picture I ever took in my life. That's the ugliest picture I've ever taken in my life. Except the one with little Kim that I'm about to show you. With the blonde hair and the blue eyes and the fake tatas, okay? But, but, I'm going to get deep on you now because I'm going to tell you the story of hip hop and history and intertwine them and show, them how, show you how our consciousness and how hip hop was our voice and that voice was taken away from us. 
You see this man here, you would say a goddamn Sambo. Well, this, that's what this figure here was known as. You put a nickel in his mouth, he starts dancing. That's Sambo. And you say, well, Flav is the modern day Sambo. Except, when I met Chuck D of Public Enemy, I said, what, uh, what the fuck is wrong with you, brother? Why you got that, that jackass there with you? And Chuck is one of the, nah, fuck it, he's one of the 10 most smartest men I've ever met in my life. He said he brings the young people in, I educate them. He said, I get out there with my militant ass, they're not gonna wanna listen. They're gonna be like, but you got him, he's, you know, and people come. They're attracted, all the young kids, look, he's cool. So he flipped that shit back onto them. He flipped that stereotype back onto them. And I've been in there, I've been in his house, I know the brother, I know his heart, and he's a good brother. But he used that Sambo shit back because Sambo was something that America created. To do what? To make the black man look less than human. And if he's less than human, you can rape his women, kill his babies, and take his land. In other words, do you see a pattern forming? And he was smart enough to use that, 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 that horrible, ugly, filthy, vile image and flip it back on him. And most of you didn't know that. Now, little Wayne, 50 Cent, that's a different dynamic. Jay-Z, that's a different dynamic. But I know that dynamic, and that's a dynamic you didn't know. When I met her, she was chocolate brown and a beautiful little sister. She was about your complexion, and she was as pretty as you, almost as pretty as you. <laughs> and look, again, if she just stayed looking, come here, come here, I'll go, come here. <laughs> Tell me she's not beautiful, I dare you. Who wants, who wants to say she's not beautiful so I can smack you? <laughs> okay, one of the beautiful things about her, she's all natural. What you see is what you get. Look at her, she's beautiful. But she couldn't sell three records dressed and looking like that. Not everybody's willing to do that. She was willing to do it. Why? Because she understood the consciousness. The people behind her understood the consciousness. And what I found out about the sister, which is kind of crazy and I didn't know, because I had her in the studio. We spent $35,000 to do a shoot. The hair, the makeup, we had a grand piano, all that stuff. And I, I, I was watching her get dressed, and I'm looking at her, and she's trying on these clothes, and she's looking in the mirror, and I'm like, holy shit. And I'm talking to her, and she's like, she got the mind of a 9 or 10-year-old child. So she was manipulated by those forces, and as long as she was doing that, now you got this new one, uh, uh, what's her name? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. What does the word menage mean? It's part of another word, menage. Lady Gaga, you know, all of them. But look at Nicki Minaj. You take away the wigs and the bullshit, nobody's gonna buy her records. And as long as, as soon as Wayne pulls up his pants and gets consciousness and understands that he has God in him and that he's reflecting and affecting a whole generation of young people, He's going to change, but they don't let me near him. They let me near him before when Baby, that big motherfucker, <laughs> was, you know, and Wayne told Baby not to step to me, and Juvenile, how many of you remember Juvenile? Yeah. Juvenile did that song, Ha. How many of you remember Ha? You went to the projects and you couldn't get a Ha. You know, you saw that girl and you, you know, Ha. You think, you think you're a pimp and, you know, Ha. They rob, you were the cat robbing that man out of his sneakers last night, huh? You know, you got locked up and, you know, you didn't know what, ha. Juvenile kept me and Baby from getting in it because Baby started talking shit to me in my studio. And he had about 35 people with him, but I didn't get upset. I don't get upset. I reached in my pocket and, no, I don't carry a gun, but I, I was making a phone call. And Juvenile said, bro, please put down the phone. He told him, he said, you in New York, you ain't in New Orleans. Him make a phone call, you have a posse of apes out there. You don't want to do that. Boom, ooh, she said, no, shut the fuck up. And baby shut the fuck up, went in the room and left me alone and I did what I had to do. See, I bring a different dimension. There's other cats photographing people, but ain't nobody like me. 
if they are, they're my babies. 